What's up everyone? So I'm just doing a quick install guide for Let There Be Flight, which is the flying car mod for Cyberpunk 2077 on PC. And the main reason for this is because I've checked the mods uh, post page and there's a bunch of people having issues installing it and, you know, errors and all that kind of thing. And I basically just want to give the start from scratch guide for all the people jumping back into Cyberpunk and wanting to, you know, try this mod out. But you might get hesitant because you go here and the author even had to lock it because there are too many people that could not get this thing installed and running properly. And it is working perfectly fine with 1.6. He actually had it patched and updated uh, really soon after the 1.6 update launched. Like it was only a couple of days. So anyway, um, we're going to start from scratch. And first I'm going to recommend an archiving tool. And I use 7-zip. This is for extracting all the mod files. And the main reason we have to use that is because we're going to be doing manual install for all the required mods. Because there's a bunch of dependencies you have to install first to get let there be flight working and these are you can go to any mod and go to the description and you can see there's the requirements section here and you need input loader mod settings red for extension red script now don't get um don't get turned off by this these don't break your game they're easy to remove and i'm going to show you how to remove any of these mods as well during the installation so that if you want to reverse any of these changes you can easily do it but for the most part once you've installed this the only thing you're going to worry about is if there's a big game update you'll have to either uninstall these mods or wait for the mods to be updated and then update the mods to get everything running smoothly again but usually those big updates are like far and wide they're not that frequent and you know a lot of these mods just needed minor tweaks to get them working again to the main requirements the main dependencies so anyway um go to this website i'll link it all in the comments below 7-zip is what i recommend just as an extraction program and get the 64-bit version because if you're playing cyberpunk on pc you're going to be running a 64-bit OS. It just doesn't make sense. You'd be on 32-bit because that's got RAM limitations. And yeah, just click download and it'll give you a little file. I'll just show you here just to show it's not malicious or anything. Go to my downloads folder and, you know, it'll go somewhere. And then you can, if you're running like any Chrome type browser, Firefox, whatever, usually when the download's done, you can just click the little arrow and show in folder and that'll go to wherever it's saved and then run it. It's an EXE file that'll install 7-zip. And you can just click install and it'll do it. But I've already got it installed, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, it just doesn't make sense to, to install over the top. And then we're going to start downloading the mod files. Now, if we go to Let There Be Flight on Nexus Mods, you can see that you might be able to download it with Nexus Mod Manager Vortex. But that is actually where a lot of people are having issues with the dependencies installing to the wrong place using Vortex after the 1.6 update. So I don't, I'm not sure exactly what the reason is. But looking at the comments below, that's what people were having problems with. They had to go to manual install. And I've always used manual install, so I never had an issue. And I figured that's the main reason for this guide. So anyway, go to requirements and see all these required mods here. Right click, open a new tab. So just right click them and click left click, open a new tab. Do it for every single one. And you'll get a bunch of tabs at the top of your browser. And then we're going to go through and install all the requirements first. So we'll start with red for extension. And the way you can install and also remove a mod is by looking at where the files go when you're doing manual installation. So to do that, you go to the file section. And as you can see, this is the latest version of Red 4 extension 1.8 and click preview file contents. And it'll actually show you the directories where everything goes in your Cyberpunk folder. So it goes into bin x64 d3dl.dll and Red 4 extensions folder has its own folder in the root directory of Cyberpunk. So now you know, if you ever want to remove this mod, you would go to these sections and delete these files. Okay, so very straightforward. And then we're going to manual download. And it'll have, you know, slow and fast. Fast is for premium users, sort of like, it's basically like having a subscription to Nexus mods. Uh, free is, works perfectly fine for most mods because they're very small packages in the first place. And then we're going to navigate to our Cyberpunk 27, 2077 directory. So go to wherever you've installed Steam or Epic Games, or you know, you hopefully you know which drive you've installed it on, and then navigate to where Steam is. So for me, it's C drive, uh, Steam, Steam apps, common, Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, the, if you're not sure, or if you're using Epic Games, obviously you have to find where your Epic Games installed to, but another way to find your directory is to actually run Cyberpunk or find it in your launcher and right click and go to properties. And you can usually 
find where the local files are. It tells me it's on C drive and I can even uh, browse or move a uh, browse, sorry, browse will open the game folder and then I can see at the top of file explorer where it's installed. So usually even Epic Games will have similar functionality or run the game itself. And when the game launches at the bottom, like it's running in your, tr in your taskbar, you can right click the running game and go to wherever it is, um, you know, just pretend this is Cyberpunk and go to properties and under the properties tab, it'll also t tell you where the target of the shortcut is. So it'll tell you where it's installed. So, you know, this game's installed in eDrive e games, etc. So anyway, uh, now that you know how to find it, find your main directory and then go one step back. So wherever it's installed, go one folder back, right click the Cyberpunk 2077 folder itself and pin to quick access. And what that does is it lets you easily get into the main folder whenever you're installing mods and that comes in very handy. So as you can see here on the left, I've got quick access. I can just click Cyberpunk 277 and I'm in my root directory of the game where I might have a mod file ready to install. Okay, so that's just for ease of access. But anyway, so we'll go here and we're gonna download, now that you know how to find the folder. So we're gonna download this mod Red 4 extension, and we're going to go to, you know, navigate to your folder. So Cyberpunk 2077, and then if you're in the root directory, you'll see archive, bin, uh, engine, R6. So that's how you know you're in the right place. Uh, it doesn't have to match every single folder because other mods will add extra folders, but those are the main ones, archive, bin, R6, uh, engine. So as long as you have those there, you know you're in the right place. And then go to save. So this is for Red 4 extension. We're going to save it into that directory. And you can basically go through... Go to the file section of all these tabs we opened and click manual download and save them all to your root cyberpunk directory and that's just how like that's just the easy way how i would do it if i was starting from scratch download all these dependencies and i'm just doing it here just i'll, I'll literally just do it live like i'll redo it all over the top just to show that all these mods are functioning and i haven't had to edit them or get do anything fancy to get them working um, just as a live demonstration because that it helps some users especially if you're not that tech savvy if you see someone actually doing it uh it makes it very simple when you can just copy them so i'm saving all these to the, my cyberpunk main directory and then also lastly let there be flight itself uh i'm this is going to be installed last but we we're just saving it into the directory so it's ready um or you can just leave it on this page doesn't matter whatever is easier for you to keep track of download it last or save it just remember to put it in last because we need all these dependencies installed. Although even if you installed it by itself without the dependencies, as long as you installed the dependencies after to add all the required files, it should still work in no matter what order you install all these mods. There's not a special order that you need. Okay. It's more that these have to be in there. That's all. So anyway, after you've downloaded all those show in folder and that'll open up your root directory. And you can see here, we've got a bunch of files and it's kind of confusing. We're going to sort by type and that will put all the mods in one place. So you can see it's ordered them folders, application extensions, and we want all the zip files. So these are all here at the bottom now. And because I've checked all these already, like I've gone into each of these files and made sure that their default behavior when you extract the file goes into the cyberpunk main directory, some mods won't. So for example, if you click a mod and you go to preview file contents, and it doesn't have these paths, it's just got like archive.dll, that's when you know that you need to manually find the right folder to extract it to. And that can be a little bit more tedious, but usually the instructions will tell you which folder to put it in, right? So as an example, um, any mod, like I can just, I'll just give you a quick example. If we go to the Cyberpunk modding page, uh, there's drone companions. I will look for something a little bit basic. Uh, Deathhawk hairstyle capless, whatever. This is a hair mod. To install this mod, the requirement is hair caps. So you need to get this requirement as I've already shown you how to do the requirement thing. And then when you're installing the mod, you preview the file com uh, contents and you know there's default, there's a few options there. And it's an archive file, but as you can see, there's no folders when we previewed it. That means this guy has not given us the default behavior when you extract this. If you extract it in the wrong place, it'll just go into whatever folder you're extracting it inside. So in other words, you'd save this, the archive files go into your, um, they go into archive PC mod, and this is where you'd have to put that archive file. So when you save it, if I was gonna install this mod, just as an example, I would manual download it, 
and when I choose the location to save, I would navigate to archive PC mod. The file, would, the zip file would would save here, and then I would right click that zip file and extract here, which is what we're going to do to install Let There Be Flight. So that's just a, a breakdown. So you so that anyone that knows how to do this can install any other mod. You won't have too many problems. So anyway, we've got all our mod files back back to what we were doing. Um, and because I, like I said, these all have their directories. If I open these up, like these are basically packages with all the files compressed inside. If I open these up, I can see that there's folder paths. The directory paths are all set. That means if I extract them into this folder, into the root, as long as I'm in the right folder, if I just right click all these files and extract here, seven zip, so right click, seven zip and extract here, they'll all go to the right place. Literally, I can do all. I can install all the requirements and let there be flight all at the same time, and there'll be no issues. So I just click extract here, and that'll do that. Okay. And if I do that though, because I've got those mods already installed, it will ask me, do I want to overwrite the files because the mod files are already in my game? Um, but basically, yeah, as you can see here, I click yes to all. If I wanted to, let's pretend I was updating the mods a year from now, and there was like more updates, and they updated everything, uh, it would want to replace files. So yes to all would literally update all my game files. Actually, I could do that. I'll do that live so that you can see what it does. But you won't have to click yes to all. It'll just automatically extract because if you're installing mods for the first time, you're not going to have any overwriting necessary because all the files will be empty. So yes to all. That's put all the mods in the right place. And then after that, you can delete these archives. You don't need them anymore. And I will recommend, though, that uh, at the very start, like hopefully you've you haven't uh, just jumped the gun, but hopefully you do have, I'm pretty sure you need to have a Nexus mod account to start downloading stuff anyway. And once you've done that, when you download these mods, you can actually go to the top of the mod pages and click track. It won't let you endorse it straight away until you've played the mod for a while. Like you need a certain amount of hours since the download, but you can track it straight away. That means that when you want to check for updates or things like that, you can go to your profile and well, wait, sorry, not your profile, up here at the top, mods, and then you can go to somewhere here, uh, tracked mods, see mod updates, and that way you can bring up all the mods you've tracked and downloaded to see if any of them have updates, and it shows you your last download, the last time you downloaded it, and the last upload, like when, the, when they updated it, so you can try to make sure that the dates aren't out of date. So as you can see, everything's basically up to date with my tracked mods. And you can also stop tracking if you decide not to use a mod. But this is just a way for you to keep track of all the different mods you might want to keep up, up to date in case they improve it. Sometimes they fix bugs, things like that. And you can track all your mods and make sure that uh, they're not outdated. So anyway, as you can see, I've already installed. Like, Let There Be Flight's already installed. It's all in the right folders, as I've shown you. And then all I have to do is run the game. So I'll play Cyberpunk and we'll see if it loads up or if it crashes or whatever. And I have it running through the main launcher, which is if you're using any red mod mods, they'll tell you to install to a new folder in the Cyberpunk directory. Uh, you'll have to create a folder called, called mods and some mods that use red mod, which is a different, it's, it's like another dependency basically, but some mods will want to go into your Cyberpunk mods folder and those are red mods and they won't load unless you go through the launcher. Uh, there's also like shortcuts you can make to get this working, but I found the most reliable way is just to launch the game through the launcher and make sure you've clicked the settings cog and enable mods is checked. And that'll get those mods working. So anyway, we're gonna run that. And my game, I forgot my game. Like I'm recording this video in 1080p, but my game is defaulting to ultra wide, which is my native resolution. But I wanted people to be able to see what I'm doing. So we're gonna change that back to 1080p just to make it visible for you guys. Okay, and my game's modded now. I can go to mod settings and see Let There Be Flight has a few options here. If you don't like the flight UI, the, the main option I would change is if you don't like the flight UI that pops up when you're flying is come down at the bottom here, flight UI settings, and turn it off. It'll be on by default. And it looks like it's kept my settings in a separate file, separate to the mod anyway. And continue. Okay, I'll just try to continue this already loaded save file that I had. We'll see if it works. Hello, hello. I'm Arif Iqbal, and you're watching. Then obviously, if the mod wasn't working, it would crash straight away, or I'd have some error trying to load it up. And 
and now we've got to test this cars will fly. Turn my gun, press E, switch to flight mode, and I'm, I'm hovering now, and hold space bar, and as you can see, the mod is working perfectly fine. Um, they, they changed the controls a little bit, where the whole car will spin now when you use A and B, which is actually easier to fly. And then space bars hover, or go up. Then W is fly forward, but I'm using my own immersive driving mode, so I actually have to shift with it to fly forward faster, or shift by itself to fly forward very fast, and it'll go up to like 500 speed. And then C will, um, C will, it's like an air brake. So you hear how stable it is. I can fly around a little bit just to show that you know, it's working and the FPS is pretty good, but that's dependent on system specs. And I've also got uh, immersive time skip, which, yeah, lets me do it while I'm in the middle of flying. We're going to skip to about 10 or 9.30. And if your car's like moving when you do it, it'll actually fast forward your car's movement, like if I was slightly moving upwards. And as you can see, the mod is working great. So E is the, you know, change to flight mode button. And then if you're on mouse and keyboard, like well you're on PC obviously, then it's basically just some, you've just gotta get the hang of it. Like I'm using my mouse here and then W is to go forward and if I want to say go that way, see how the car's turning like that, then I put the mouse behind it. Like I can move the camera behind it. But I've got auto centering disabled from another mod because I don't like how the camera will just suddenly like if I'm just watching the car like this, the camera will just suddenly go like this all the time and it's so annoying uh, so look up that mod too it's like auto disable auto center or something like that alrighty guys well that's the end of the video so I hope that helps some of you out and yeah if that helped you then please like and subscribe and thanks for watching I'll see you in the next one bye and take care <gasps> <gasps>